attention, the nation, you are most welcome, Mr. President. What distance has been covered in, 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 in prosecuting those goals and what remains to be done and what is the main obstacle on that tra transformational Identity, religious, tribal, and gender chauvinism. After careful analysis, we established that Africa needed us to pursue three historical missions. If Africa was to survive, and thrive. That's how we looked at it. We looked at it as a matter of survival. If Africa is to survive, we thought it had to do the, the following. The three historic missions are prosperity for the African people, including, including the people of Uganda. Are the people of Africa entitled to prosperity or not? Secondly, strategic security for the African people. Do the, do the African people need to be secure from all threats from wherever? And taking advantage of the brotherhood of the African people to achieve the first two missions. These Africans you are talking about, do you know 
that they are either similar people or they are linked. How was the prosperity of the African people to be achieved? Could it be achieved through begging for foreign aid, as some were emphasizing? Could foreign aid give us the prosperity we are talking about? The answer, according to us, was no. Our conclusion was that prosperity could only come from each adult person engaging in producing a good or a service sustainably and selling it. That's where prosperity comes from. Each adult person must produce a good or a service and said it. If he or she does so with Echivaro, Echivaro is our local language meaning uh, maximizing profit, making sure that what you are doing ha will, will, will give you uh, what you want, he or she will be prosperous. Since individuals cannot effectively work alone. The different zones of the country are always encouraged to specialize in given clusters of products or services. It is this realization that led us to, to distill our first NRM principle, patriotism, love Uganda, why you love Uganda? It is because you need it for your prosperity in the form of the market. Whether you like other Ugandans or you don't like them, but you need them for your prosperity because they need to buy what you produce so that you are able to be prosperous. When you produce a good or a service, the next question is, who will buy the good or service and in sufficient, sufficient quantities to guarantee the prosperity of the wealth creator. One of the factors we realized was that normally people of the same tribe or the same locality produce similar products. Hence, they do not easily buy from one another. It is the people from other parts of the country that produce different products that buy the wealth creator's products. Therefore, the opportunists that promote sectarianism and parochialism are enemies of wealth creators starting with their relatives. They are pseudo prophets. Banabi Abib Shuba. Banabi Abob Limba. The Historic Commission of Prosperity pushed us to discover the second NRM ideological principle, that of Pan Africanism. Love East Africa. Love Africa. Uh, those who are the guests who are not from here, from East Africa, they had us playing two anthems. The anthems you had. One anthem is for Uganda, the other one is for East Africa. We insist on that. That in order for us, to get out of poverty. We need Uganda. We need East Africa. We need Africa. Because if they buy what we produce, we are going to be prosperous. And if we also buy what they produce. But 
Why? It is because you need them. You need East Africa. You need, you need Africa for your prosperity. Other issues aside. When wealth creators get serious with production, when they increase the production of goods and services, the internal market is no longer enough. When you see people talking of tribes and religions, it is because they are not serious. Because if you are a serious wealth creator, there is no way you can talk of, uh, of a tribe or, 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 or religion. Because you need the pockets of so many people to support your prosperity. When the wealth creators get serious with production, when they increase the production of goods and services, the internal market is no longer enough. We need the East African market, we need the African market, and we need the global market. Since the recovery of the economy of Uganda, we have seen this. It's not a theory. We have seen it. We saw it before. It was implemented, but we have now seen it in reality. Our production of sugar is now 600,000 metric tons. However, the internal market is only 380,000 metric tons. Who is to buy the surplus sugar of 220,000 metric tons? The milk production is now 5.3 billion liters. Who is to buy the extra 4.5 billion liters since the internal demand is only 800 million liters? The cement production is now 6.4 million metric tons, and yet the internal demand is only 2.4 million tons. Who is buying the surplus? How about the steel products? The internal demand is 1.5 million metric tons, yet the annual production of steel products in Metayimbwa, although still at 610,000 metric tons, leaving a deficit of 890,000 metric tons, it will soon be about 3 million metric tons with the new vertically integrated steel industries using the high grade of tari. Of tari is the, our indigenous word for iron ore of muko in the Rwanda area. So soon our production will be 3 million metric tons of, of steel. And yet the internal demand is 1.5 million. Who will buy the surplus steel? The products of the new vertical integrated factories will completely wipe out the need for importing high quality steel for hydropower dams, the railway, high rise buildings, etc., that need very strong steel different from the steel of the recycled steel products from scrap metal. Because up to now, we have been using scrap metal, the old tanks of Idi Amin, to, to make steel. But now we are going to use our iron ore, our obutari, the best in the world. There is no other iron ore which is richer than this one, 70% pure. Even now, we also import steel ingots and add value. Some of this steel is re-exported to, to, the, to the region. The answer for all those, these questions is that it is mainly East and Central Africa that are buying the surplus. The commercial area is buying goods and services 
worth US dollars 2 billion, 2.157 billion from Uganda. Therefore, the NRM was right to distill the principles of patriotism and pan-Africanism and to oppose groups that were pushing for parochialism in Uganda and Eurocentrism globally. You know, when we were about to come into government, I went to Europe. And the Europeans asked me, because our old political parties here, the Democratic Party was allied to the Christian Democratic Party of Germany. They were, they were actually getting, being, being supported by the Conrad Adenauer Foundation. The UPC was being supported by the Social Democrats. They have got their group. They are the ones who helped them to build the Uganda House, to start building the Uganda House. Then, then the government built it using government money. And when we came, some people wanted me to take back the building. I said, no, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. So, these fellows expected us to side with the European parties, Social Democrats versus Christian Democrats. I said, sorry, I'm not part of that crowd. I am an Afrocentric person. I start with Africa. I don't start with Europe. I'm not a European. So we refused to join those groups. They, they had a Christian International, uh, Socialist International. I, I, we have never gone there. Never. And we told our people clearly that our focus is Africa. And here, I'm giving you facts now. I'm not talking about uh, stories here. I'm talking of cement. The list is too long. I couldn't finish it. I didn't talk about maize, about bananas, about beef. You, you, you know what is happening. It is Africa that is supporting us, and we are also supporting them. Therefore, the NRM was right to distill the principles of patriotism and pan-Africanism and to oppose groups that were pushing for parochialism in Uganda and Eurocentrism globally. After the careful analysis, we realized that our prosperity, first and foremost, needed patriotism, that is love Uganda, and pan-Africanism, love Africa. We access other markets in addition, but let us secure these two levels first. This is why we worked so hard to revive the East African community and to consolidate Comesa. I salute the Waze, Daniel, Daniel Arab Moy, the late Al Hassan Mwinyi, the late, and Benjamin Mukapa, the late, for helping us in this effort. On the Comesa battle, I remember leaders like His Excellency Jean Baptiste Bagaza of Burundi, Dr. Peter Mutarika of, of Malawi. Bax, Bax Nonvete, he was our Secretary General, he was from South Africa, of Comesa, and others. 
The third principle of the NRM ideology is social economic transformation. Through education for all, bonaba somme, and wealth creation for all, bona bagagaware, by all the families joining the money economy and getting out of the pre-capitalist subsistence economy, or korra echida kionka. The fourth. NRM ideological principle is democracy, real democracy for empowering the people to grow and not cheap popularity that the new colonial agents used to manipulate the people. The correct philosophy, the correct ideology, and the correct strategy of the NRM, mark those three words, my, my friends, The world has got a lot of problems. Africa has got a lot of problems. Because they make mistakes on philosophy, make mistakes on ideology, make mistakes on strategy. Uh, the correct philosophy, ideology, and the strategy of the NRM have enabled the economy and society of Uganda to go through five phases since 1986. These phases are, number one, the minimum economic recovery phase of restoring aspects of the small colonial enclave money economy of the three C's and three T's. Our, colonial, our small colonial economy was characterized by the economy of the three C's and the three T's. Three C's was coffee, copper, and cotton. And the three T's were tobacco, tourism, and tea. It was a small economy. But when Amin came, he destroyed it. I, I, didn't, I didn't have time to explain that. So when we came in, we had to restore that, that small island. That's why we, that's why we are calling it enclave. Because enclave means an island, an island of modernity surrounded by a sea of backwardness. That's the situation we had here in the, in, in the 1960s. And, and that small island was, was, was comprised of the three T's and the three C's. But it, I mean, destroyed it. So when, when we came, we had to bring it back. This is the first phase we call the minimum economic recovery. Two, expanding that enclave with, with the more production of coffee, tea, etc. That small island was producing coffee of two million bags. We are now producing nine million bags. That small island was producing tea of 23 million kilograms before Amin came in. By the time we came, tea production had declined to 3 million kilograms. We are now producing 60 million kilograms of, 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 of tea. So, number one, minimum recovery. Number two, expansion of the small island economy. Number three, the diversification of the enclave economy by commercializing the production of bananas, cassava, milk, fruits, palm oil, cocoa, fish, beef, etc. Because during the time of the British, they would say that coffee was the cash crop. Milk and maize and so on were not cash crops. They were just for, for home consumption. But we said no, all these are cash products. That's why therefore phase three 
has been diversification. Phase four, adding value to some of these raw materials, such as cotton, fruits, milk, tea, timber, sugar, etc. The other day in my speech in Nairobi, I, I was able to castigate the African practice of, of exporting raw materials. This is very, 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 very dangerous for this continent. Here, I have banned the export of unprocessed minerals. If, if a mineral is not fully processed, I don't allow it to be exported. But even the other products, we are struggling to add value to all of them, even coffee. Now, number five, phase five, the knowledge economy through the production of vaccines, the production of automobiles, and so on. So we are now also entering the fifth phase where, where we use the, the science of our young people <coughs> to produce products. These measures have enabled the economy to grow from U.S. dollars 1.5 billion in 1986 to now U.S. dollars 55 billion by the foreign exchange method and U.S. dollars 180 billion by the PPP method, purchasing power parity method. With U.S. US dollars 1,182 per capita, Uganda now has entered the lower middle income status. We have just entered the, the ground floor of the middle income. Just the, the first floor, we are, we, we are down there now. We have a king of Mugrofe Soka. To Mugrofe Soka, we have a king of Mugrofe Soka. There are, however, some, still some trade barriers in the East African community. These are really roadblocks to our prosperity. All the East Africans should work to remove these bottlenecks by implementing fully the common market protocols, the customs union protocols, so that the fragmented markets of Africa become one market. With a more united African market, we can then be able to negotiate with other countries for market, for market access to, to, to their markets, such as the European Union, United States of America, USA, China, Russia, the Gulf countries, India, ETC. Internally, we have guided our people that the social economic transformation can be realized through Bonaba Somme, education for all, and Bonaba Gagawere, prosperity for all, by joining the four money making sectors of commercial agriculture, manufacturing, services, and ICT. The government has provided grants or soft loans for wealth creators to use in joining these sectors in case they do not have their own capital. These funds are well known, operational wealth creation, NADS, PMA, Entandukwa, Parish Development Model Money, Emioga, the Youth Fund, the Women Fund, Grow Money, ETC. This, some of these have been merged to become fewer funds, but doing the same, same work. These funds are mainly for the low-income people. The actors 
that are more empowered should, should borrow from the Uganda Development Bank for agriculture, for manufacturing, and some of the services such as tourism. We don't give loans for importers of perfumes and dead people's clothes. You know, I was having a big discussion with them here. here. Those importers, I cannot give a loan to somebody, soft money, to, for somebody to import dead people's clothes and import perfumes and whiskey and so on. No. The Uganda Development Bank money is for manufacturing, for agriculture, and for some of the services. If you want to import perfumes, go to the commercial banks. All we have said above is targeted to enable us to create prosperity for ourselves through wealth creation. The second historical mission is strategic security for Africa. African countries, or indeed other countries in the world, may be prosperous economically. Strategically speaking, however, they may still be vulnerable vis-a-vis -vis other global actors. In the Second World War, the first victims of German aggression were the developed countries of Denmark, Holland, Belgium, ETC, even France, was conquered by Germany. Therefore, there is something about size. Indeed, the small countries of Europe were rescued by the mighty Soviet Union that defeated Hitler's army at Moscow, Belorussia, Stalingrad, Kursk, ETC, and were later on, in 1944, joined by the Americans and the British. As we speak today, only four countries have been able to land on the moon. These are the USA, China, India, and Russia. Why? Size and development matter. Uganda, even when it becomes a developed country, cannot have an overambitious space program. We are working on implementing a limited space program for overhead observation and communication, broadcasting and telephone communication. We shall have an overhead imaging satellite at an altitude of 600 to 700 kilometers in space and another one for communication and internet at 36,000 kilometers in space. That, we shall, that one we shall share with the other East African countries. These are, however, not enough to defeat greedy and aggressive parasites who seek four-dimensional superiority on land, land forces, superiority in the air, air force, superiority at sea, navy, and superiority in space, space forces. It is partly for this reason, but also for the purpose of implementing the economic integration of the markets easier, that we, the African revolutionaries, our departed elders, such as Kwame Nkrumah, Marim Nyerere, Sekoture, Mze Kenneth Kawunda, and we, their young followers, put forward the principle of political integration as another element of, of the Pan-Africanism principle. While we always aim at creating a continental common market for the whole of Africa, we also aim at creating a regional political federation where possible. While it is possible and desirable to create a continental common market, a political federation which represents a maximum form of integration should only be for peoples who are either similar 
or compatible and preferably with a common language. This is how East Africa has always been the best candidate for political integration. The peoples of the area are the Bantus, the Nilotics, the Nilohamitics, and the Cushitics, whose dialects are either similar or linked. Those delegates, those visitors of yours from Malawi, from Zambia, I'm sure I can speak with them when we finish the ceremony here. I will greet them. I will say, Muribuanji, Turuino, Murichari. I've been talking to them. However, on top of all that, we have the good fortune of having the neutral dialect of Swahili that would easily be the official language of the potentially very powerful Federation of East and Central Africa. This East African Federation, with one army, a common citizenship, in addition to wider common market already talked about in this speech, will provide perpetual insurance for the freedom of the black race and other freedom-loving people in the world. It will have a defense capacity to be present in the four dimensions, land, air, sea, and space. How can you insure cars, you insure houses, you insure individual people's health, but forget to provide insurance for the African race? People have got insurance policy. Me, I don't have insurance policy for anything. My insurance is for, if Uganda succeeds, I am insured. I have never, mama is here, I have never bought insurance policy. Never. Uh. My insurance is for Uganda to succeed. If, when Uganda succeeds, I succeed. But how can you have insurance for cars and buildings and I don't know what, but you don't insure the African race for them to be secure from threats? This this was a mistake in the past. How can we repeat the same mistake? In 1963, our leaders were about to achieve this goal. I want to give to the right honorable speaker a historical picture of the pages of the Uganda Agas. Aha, it is there on the screen. That picture there. Uh -huh. Federation this year, that was 1963. I will give you a copy right on the room. I, I give to the right honorable speaker a historical picture of the pages. Ah, that's clear. Show it to, to the other people, not just me. Are the audience seeing it? Uh, that was 1963, and it was the 6th of June, like today. A historical picture of the pages of the Uganda Gas newspaper of the 6th of June, 1963, that captured that moment. You can see, bring the picture of our, our leaders. Move up the, want to see the leaders in that picture there. Uh, the, the picture below is, yes, the picture below uh, uh, is, uh, you can see our elders, Mze Jomo Kenyatta, Marimu Nyerere, Mze Milton Obote with others including a delegation from Somalia de declaring the intention to achieve the federation that year, 1963. All the subsequent calamities that befell this part of Africa would never have happened if we had achieved that goal that time. The calamities I'm talking about were the seizing of power by Idi Amin in Uganda, 
the massacres in Burundi in 1973, 1972, the genocide in Rwanda, the collapse of the state authority in Somalia, the prolonged civil war in Sudan, or even the Renamo war in Mozambique, ETC. There was no way Idi Amin could seize power here if we had an East African government. It, it couldn't happen. But the fragmentation, the, 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 the pseudo sovereignty, you, you can imagine when I mean it, grabbed power here, Africans who wanted to oppose him could not do it easily because they were, they were being told, Uganda is independent, Uganda is independent. And even when Amin was killing us, when we would try to get support from other people, we would be told, no, it is Amin's right to kill you because you are, you are his subject. You are his, you are his subject. So that missed opportunity was a big setback. A United, a United East African state with one army would never have allowed these tragedies to happen. Indeed, it is the East African cooperation that eventually enables us to solve these problems. However, coordinating multiple sovereign units is less efficient and less prompt in terms of action compared to a united East Africa. The third historic mission is to simply recognize the brotherhood and linkages among the African people and use them to achieve historic missions number one, prosperity, as well as number two, strategic security. As we have pointed out a number of times, the African race is only comprised of four groups of linguistic classification. These are the Niger-Congo, which includes the Bantu and the Kwa languages of West Africa, the nairo saharan which includes like our languages, of the Nairotic languages and the nairo hamitic the Afro-Asiatic, which in includes the, the languages of Northern Ethiopia, and the Khoisan. Khoisan are the, they are called the Bushmen in South Africa. They used to be called Bushmen. These groups have linguistic similarities within each cluster and linkages between them. In, in other speeches, I have, I have demonstrated this. You can check on those explanations. The NLM line has been that the people we are trying to unite for the sake of their prosperity and strategic security are either similar or linked. It is therefore a betrayal for the African political classes to fail to grasp with this and instead preach sectarianism, parochialism, etc. I therefore call on the Ugandans, especially the Bazukuru, to audit what has been achieved vis-à-vis -vis the three historical tasks and the four ideological principles of the NRM, see what has been achieved and what remains to be done. Then you should do your own part to do what is not yet done. With patriotism, we have been able to unite the majority of Ugandans. That is why the NRM always wins with the majority on the first round when we go for elections. On the side of Pan-Africanism, we have revived the East African community together with the Wazay, Daniel Arap Moy, Al Hassan Mwinyi, and Benjamin Mkapa. Later, our brothers from Rwanda, Burundi, Congo DRC, South Sudan, and recently Somalia joined the East African community. This has helped cross-border trade. Uganda exports goods and services worth US dollars 2.1 billion to the East African countries. And goods and services worth US dollars 2.157 billion 
to the commercial countries. There are, however, still non-tariff barriers. With His Excellency William Ruto recently, we agreed to remove all these barriers against sugar, milk, eggs, fruit juices, etc. Saying that X country has got good rains this year and harvested a lot of maize, and therefore X country either will either give quarters for maize from Y. Imagine there are two African countries, X and Y. They should be trading together. But one year, X says, this year I got a lot of rain and I, I harvested a lot of maize. So I don't allow your maize to come. The maize of, of, of Y. Uh -huh. Or I allow what they call a quarter, a certain amount. I either give quarters for maize from Y or will not allow any maize imports from Y this year is wrong. What happens? Why is it wrong? What happens to the maize growers in Y that year? Since the maize in Y will Kudiba. Kudiba is our local word here. Meaning that if you produce something and nobody buys, it's Kudiba. So if the maize from Y this year Kudibas, because in X, this year they have got their own maize. What happens to the maize growers in Y that year? Since the maize in Y with Kudiba have no buyers, the farmers will migrate to coffee, a product that depends on the global market and does not have those hard rows. Then next year, there's a shortage of rain in X and they want maize from Y. Sorry, the farmers were betrayed and they migrated to other products. This is, what, this is the, the, the problem. The correct approach should be that maize from Y should not be blocked even if there is a bumper crop in country X. Let the market determine the maize that will be preferred by the consumers. If it is found that maize producers in country Y are cheaper consistently, then let East Africa allow them to specialize and feed all of us. This is what I said about Tanzanian rice. If Tanzania produces rice more cheaply, let us all buy from them. Stopping Tanzanian rice makes us commit several sins. Sin number one, you sabotage the Tanzanian rice grower by denying him market. Scene number two, you rob the Ugandan consumer by forcing him to buy rice from the inefficient Uganda rice grower at a higher price because you are punishing the Ugandans to buy more expensive rice that is that it is because it is from Uganda. Scene number three, you invite Tanzania to counter block our products. Scene number four, you claim as our own rice growers to remain inefficient and therefore not competitive. Or claim as is to cripple. Because if you don't allow your, your child to run and compete, how will he develop capacity. Therefore, let all the East Africans insist on full free trade in the East African community area and eventually in the whole continental free trade area, CFTA. 
This is the second task of the Ugandan wealth creators, struggle for the completely free trade in the common market of East, East African community and Africa. The first task of the Ugandan wealth creators is to ensure that all the adults engage in wealth creation in the four sectors of commercial agriculture with the Chibaro, Chura, Otita, Aymar, profitability assessment, manufacturing and artisanship services and ICT using the provided funds of PDM, EMIOGA, GROW, UDB loans, ETC. The third task, after we have fully recovered from the adverse effects of corona and other negative global phenomena, ensure that we provide completely free education for the Ugandan children in, in government primary and secondary and tertiary institutions so that we achieve our target of Bonabasume education for all. The fourth task is for the Ugandans and other East Africans that we have got that have got the right spectacles to see how the black race can survive as a free people or even survive at all to struggle and bring about the creation of the East African Federation. We have long proposed the movement of the weary. When Marimu was, was let down by his contemporaries on this issue, he moved with Mzee Karume to unite Tanganyika and Zanzibar to form Tanzania. It has been a great success. If we all can move together, it will be good. If we cannot, let the willing move. The crucial point that needs to be done is for the Pan-Africanists to be more active in pushing for the struggle for the political federation of East Africa and for the full economic integration of the common market of Africa. You should aggressively expose those who work for foreign interests and are always diverting our people through the media to the interests of the foreigners. If you read the, the papers, nobody is talking about African integration. You, you pick the papers. Papers, social media. What is your future? If you don't know that integration of the market is, is our salvation, then what, how can you be in leadership? What are you leading? Are you a leader unto darkness and death? How can it be that you read the papers? Nobody, nobody. Football, uh, music, cinema, I don't know what. Okay, you can do those things, but you must survive fast. You should aggressively expose those who work for foreign interests and are always diverting our people through the media to the interests of, foreign, of the foreign parasites. The African race will enjoy football and music better. I, I, I am a footballer myself, you remember? However, from 1966, somebody asked me, what, what, what European football club do I support? I said, what? Me to, to, to support, you, I don't even know those clubs. I am a footballer, I was a footballer, but from 1966, when we started our struggles here, my mind is on the future of Africa. I like football, but you cannot have football if you are a slave. You cannot enjoy it. The African race will enjoy football and music better if you also contribute to the creating of, of an African center of gravity in the form of the East African Federation. Task five, eliminate corruption in the public service and from among the political leaders. I've been getting good information 
about corrupt actors among the public servants, but also among the political actors. With firm evidence, we shall crush these traitors. Corruption is... Are you hearing me? You are hearing? I think the corrupt, the corrupt have, have brought rain. You know, they, they work with the, our rainmakers. I have been, this is not in the speech here, but I can mention to you. I have been hearing that people, even in my office, take bribes from people to bring people to see me. Can you imagine? But fortunately, recently, we arrested one of them. He's, he's alleged, according to the rules, I, sh I, 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 I should not be accused that I, I'm saying something subjudice, which is in the court. He's alleged to have extorted shares and money from an investor who was coming from somewhere. He's now in court. So we are moving. We are going to get them. I have been hearing stories that there is a, a rocket from the Minister of Finance to, the, to, to Parliament. Uh -huh. To Parliament. I have been hearing, but now I have proof. Norecho Ababi Bafu de Banangi I have been hearing that from Minister of Finance they arrange they arrange with the accounting officers of ministries to come to Parliament working with some people there to provide certain funds, provided you take a share. I didn't believe this, but now I have proof. So, therefore, really the, the corrupt are like the foreigners. You know, some of these foreigners don't know Uganda, don't know us. When you see them doing what they are doing, they, and those who support them, I'm very sorry for them because they don't, they don't know how, how strong we are. We are patient, we don't, we don't overuse our strength, but if you make a mistake, you, you will see. So, the, I, I, I don't know how the those who threaten us, this one, please, we are wasting your time. We are not going to move. Uh, because we, we are sure, we are people of here, this is our land. We want nothing from anybody, so you are wasting your time. Don't, don't come with the threat, you are wasting your time. Uganda is a land of matters, but not, not only matters, but also heroes. We are celebrating two days. Uh, because the matters don't shoot back. But we are, we, we are both matters, but also heroes. On the third, we are celebrating uh, Matters Day. On the ninth, you remember ninth, you come. We shall be celebrating Heroes Day. We are, we are, we are fighters. Nobody can play around here. So I feel uh, real amazing that some of our people can join this corruption knowing that we, we have the capacity to crush all this group. So now I have got proof that what I've been hearing as a rumor is actually true. So I don't know how we can arrange, how, how we can arrange, 
what do you call it? Amnesty. No amnesty. Very good. So you, 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 you want blood? Mother, I'm sorry. Kale katu katu gende maso. Public servants and political leaders that steal government money are corrupt and will be crushed. There are, however, other actors that get bribes from foreigners to work for foreign interests. These are both corrupt and traitors. And we are monitoring their activities. If they do not stop, and with evidence, we shall deal with them also. As part of fighting corruption, it is crucial to save the amateurish political actors who come into politics without knowing that leading people does not mean carrying them on your head. It means that you show them the way. The situation of inexperienced, careerist-minded leaders who do not listen to the advice of the NRM is further co complicated by the bloodthirsty parasites in the form of the unregulated money lenders who charge extortionate interest rates from these desperate political actors when they come to borrow money for and useful expenditures. I've already directed the Minister of Finance to cap the interest rates chargeable by money lenders. The inflation rate in Uganda is 3%. Why should the commercial banks charge 20% interest? How about the money lenders charging 36% or more? This is pure extortion. The PDM and the MIOGA funds are going to become the poor people's banks able to lend at 12% or less after 24 months. We are going, this, this PDM money, people are trying to sabotage it, but I can hear it is beginning to penetrate. People are beginning to understand it now. They are beginning, slowly, slowly, the, the, the villagers are beginning to, under, to, to appreciate. That's what I hear. The other source, I have already directed the Attorney General to guide the Minister of Finance as to how he can criminalize this extortion by the money lenders. The other source of corruption has been the fundraising that is borne mainly by the opportunistic politicians of anxious to please parts of their electorate by pledging money for the fundraising that they do not have. We are due to meet to resolve this diversion. I agreed with the reason we should meet and really discuss the issue of fundraising because this is part of the pressure that makes leaders make mistakes. Uganda's economy and society are moving forward. The mistakes by some actors notwithstanding. I was reading uh, some comments, especially in the monitor. You know, monitor is, is a mouthpiece of, of foreign interests here. The monitor newspaper. Oh, talking about this, talking about this. There's one of them who was uh, writing today. I, 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 I glanced through, was saying that Uganda has low inflation by fortune. That is, is by fortune. Imagine. He it want to say that NRM has managed the economy well. That's why inflation is low. Uh-uh. That it is a mixer. It was fortune that we have got low inflation. It's not, it's not fortune. It is planning. But monitor, the other time, I, I, I saw a cow talking. When you, see, when, when you see a cow talking, 
Then you know that God is, Jesus is about to come. I, I show, you show me that picture of the monitor. About to go and get a monitor. Huh? Bring it properly. Over, over the tune. Ah, eh. Never have ever no more. But what's about you? And could Now, Ugandans turn to local products to combat high cost of living. You remember my, our war with the, with, the, with the importers? This was, hold it there. This was Ugandan monitor newspaper. A, a cow talking. Saying that because we put tax on the imported products, imported dead people's clothes, and, and that rubbish from outside, that now Ugandans turn to local products. This was, it, it, which, which date was this? Huh? Huh? 30th of what? Of May. Uh, you people, you get. Monitor and a turns of Kogera. A cow is talking. Because that's what we said. Why don't you buy the local textiles which are being made here? So, Katwanda Jari, our monitor, Katwanda Aba Isemu. But otherwise, they were trying to. Thank you very much. You can move on. Otherwise, in today's paper, I was trying to say, oh, this one, this one. But you listen carefully. I will conclude with that. Uganda's economy and society are moving forward. The mistakes by some actors are not withstanding. The foreigners interfering in our internal affairs are not are not a threat at all. There's not no foreigner who can threaten us. No no foreigner can threaten us. I have written a piece I will share with the Ugandans on that. The real threat to Africa's progress have been internal weaknesses such as undermining the private sector. I mean, 1972, when he expelled the, the, the Indians, and Mzee Obote, 1970, when he announced the, the national announcements, interfering with the private sec sector. Wrong concept of army building. Sectarianism. Corruption. ETC. Otherwise, Africa's ability to defeat the imperialists had been demonstrated by Samara Machel defeating the entire Portuguese army in Mozambique in 1974, Robert Mugabe and Zanu defeating the Ian Smith regime in 1980 in Zimbabwe, the Cuban army comprised men of black soldiers defeating the White Boer army at Quito Guanavare in Angola in 1988 ETC. So, our armies defeated European armies in the 1970s. It is our internal weaknesses that have since that time given the impression that Africa is weak. NLM has correct philosophical, private sector-led efforts, ideological, the politics of interest are not, are not identity and sectarianism, and strategic wealth creators and integration to create markets for their, for their products positions. That is why the economy is growing in spite of the betrayal by the parasites. With the crushing of the corruption, Uganda, given our, our overall correct positions, 
is unstoppable. Everything else is in place. What is the problem now is just corruption. In the budget speech, I will add some more information on this line, saying that everything else is in place now. It is only corruption and a few other mistakes that are, can sabotage what we are doing. Therefore, the Right Honourable Speaker, I thank the Parliament for the following laws you passed since the, my set of the nation address. Those laws are, are put in Annex 1. I put it as Annex 1 in, uh, in this speech. In the coming year, the Executive will present the following bills to Parliament for enactment into law. I, I, I attach them as Annex 2. They, are, they will be attached to the speech. Finally, I want to salute the Speaker the Deputy Speaker and the NRM MPs. In the past, there was a risky and shallow tendency by some actors that would try to use Parliament to undermine the Ugandan Revolution, which is part of the African Revolution. This, of course, was a miscalculation that was provocative, but we managed to handle it peacefully. Right Honourable Speaker and your team, I congratulate you for working harmoniously with the executive. I also, I, I'm told some of the foreigners are, are saying that Anita Mongo, because he doesn't undermine uh, the, 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 the executive, she's not a good speaker because she should be Okure uh, Mesa, government. Very risky miscalculation. Eh? In the recent budgeting process, Honorable uh, Speaker, I congratulate you for working harmoniously with the executive. I also want to salute the judiciary. In the recent budgeting process, you came together and you were able to synthesize a rational and transparent budget for the country. I, I call these people, you, you know, these are like school children that there is executive somewhere, then there is a parliament somewhere else, then there is judiciary somewhere else, they don't meet, then this one budgets, then brings the other one. I said, but why don't you first agree together? You are all here in Uganda, your address is here. Why can't you meet and, and, and you look at the whole budget? They came and they looked at it and the budget they brought was harmonized by, by, by the three arms. They were able to see that we need this, we need that, we need that. So I want to thank the parliament and the judiciary. In the recent budgeting process, you came together and were able to synthesize a rational and transparent budget for the country. Now, on the issue of uh, the corruption, my advice is you should make a distinction between mistake makers and dishonest people. Dishonesty is, is, is the worst. Uh, but making mistakes, uh, especially for you, for many people who have not listened carefully, uh, it's not. So, uh, I wouldn't. Be, I wouldn't be surprised. That's why many times I, I, I try to, to help out groups who have made mistakes. But what I cannot tolerate is like this question of say. We give money to this ministry, but we take, we take a percentage of it as, 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 as individual. This is, this, is, this is dishonesty. It's not a mistake, it's a crime, it's a betrayal. Or the ones who go abroad, 
these foreigners have been approaching our people. They, they, they all bring re reports. I've been approaching our people. You go and make a bad report against the government of Uganda, and we shall give you an award. And the award will, will have so much money attached to it in Europe. I wish them good luck. That money of, of betrayal, we are following it up, we are following it up. They, they, they think that we are fools. I don't know what, why they think so. But we follow all of that. So those, those two, the dishonest and the, and the traitor, are the ones we are targeting. The mistake makers, we can cancel them and show them how to do things. Because if we are to, to, to punish all the mistake makers, we will have nobody to work with. Because they, they, they don't know what, what to do, they don't listen. There are so many, so many, so many to uh, languages, this one is saying that, this one is saying that. Uh, so, dishonest, foreign agent, mistake maker. Those are three people who need to be handled differently. In the recent budgeting process, you came together and you were able to synthesize a rational and transparent budget for the country. I want to end by congratulating the UPDF, the Uganda Police Force, the intelligence services, and the prison services for guarding the three million pilgrims that were at Namgongo recently. I salute all the Ugandans for the good work you are doing. Madam Speaker, it is my pleasure to declare the fourth session of the 11th Parliament open. I thank you very much and hope that the coming session will be fruitful. God bless Uganda. God bless Africa. Apoyo Matek. Salam TV Entamuza ya dawa tujongedde mwe bisoko ne binonogo mu buddo obunyovu ku muziki tigwo wenyini mu kitundu kyo era ku mane tubane shemusi ni kiti togwa musuru tuli bolo Allah na kwanza okwanja gakukonna la kulira gweto samukka